so here we have seen the hormone ghrelin it causes the hunger pangs for a period of 30 to 40 or 45 minutes so we take the food we consume the food once the food is taken when we do not need any more food then this initiation uh, stops but do we have any mechanism or any other system coordinated to make you stop eating yes of course we have one more hormone called as leptin which is secreted again which will give you a, a stomach filled feeling so your hunger is satisfied so that feeling is obtained by this hormone and it stops the hunger then we stop eating so this is caused by the another hormone so this is how the hormones are coordinated with the digestive system let us see that other processes okay we have seen that feeling hungry and taking the food so after taking the food there are so many processes before we get energy before we get nutrients out of the food in the process of digestion let us see how the other systems are involved in the process of digestion how they are coordinated so sometimes we feel like even though uh, you are hungry sometimes if the food is not good taste the food is stale smelling spoiled food then what do you do so even though you try to put you will get vomiting rejection so that is also how your nervous system and your sensory systems nose and taste buds how they are coordinating somebody somebody gives you some bitter god juice you are asked to drink the bitter god juice so if you drink that immediately what happens soon after you put it in your mouth immediately you vomit because here the sense organs are involved because of its bad taste so it is vomited or rejected so this gives an idea not only hungry and taking the food sometimes food is rejected also so at what conditions it is rejected how it is rejected and what are the various systems helped in that rejection let us see so we have uh, seen that to create a hunger there is a kind of hormone which is initiating the feeling of hunger so sometimes what makes you to uh, choose the food so you are, you are given different kind of food items you don't know the names even food items are placed in front of you in the dishes so how do you prefer what preference how you give preference say for example which food items you select first you use your senses first you use your eyes you choose the bright uh, bright looking ones good looking ones you use your sense of smell the ones which is uh, which are giving good smell even while tasting while enjoying the food you are enjoying your food a biryani so how do you enjoy how do you what difference you find between a ordinary rice a steam boiled rice and a biryani you will enjoy the flavor of it so how do we enjoy the flavor what is the difference between the flavor and taste so for many of the foods we enjoy the flavor rather than its taste so you know the basic taste like whether it is sweet salt sour bitter or savory taste which is called as umami so these are the taste but we have so many different items with different tastes we say thousands of food items of course these thousands of food items may be having the either salt either sweet or salt or sour or bitter or a combination of this but apart from this the food will have certain order the flavor of the food is obtained by the taste as well as the order the smell of the food so while identifying your food you have two systems the nose and your tongue both the things should coordinated and give you a final result that is the flavor of the food so when you are caught with cold or cough so then in such cases 
your linings of your uh, nose nasal cavity are inflamed so they cannot identify the smell of the food which you are eating such cases you will fail to enjoy the food you will fail to identify the food of course your tongue may give you only the taste whether it is sweet or salt or sour or bitter but not the exact food item you may not be able to find it out if you do an activity like if you take small pieces of potato potato and apple so your eyes are closed you are blindfolded and there is uh, some clip plastic clip is kept to your nose or you closed your nose with your fingers for some time that means you are not smelling the food you are asked to eat the pieces of potato and apple so when you eat the potato and apple you get same kind of texture moving in your mouth so immediately you cannot tell what is potato what is apple because the smell is not there of course there is a big difference in the taste you will identify the sweetness in apple later when when the apple is crushed down and when it is melted in your saliva mixed in your saliva you will get the taste so it takes some time but immediately you cannot identify so this will this tells you this experiment tells you the importance of the coordination or the link between the smell and taste so here we understood in this experiment potato and apple at the same time you can take some jeera and somph without smelling if you have chewed some somph or jeera you will find both of them are same it takes some time so by the experiment we understood that of course we can find out the difference in taste but it takes time taste actually how do we know how do we will come to know the taste of a food our tongue it has got taste buds papillae on the surface of the tongue so these papillae how they are the surface of the tongue is not so flat the surface of the tongue it has got taste buds and there are certain incisions some pit like structures cup like structures so the food when it falls into this cup like structures in the taste buds then the taste is analyzed but how the food should be not an exact solid first the food should be melted or mixed well with saliva when the food is in liquid form that is mixed with saliva when it is pushed into these cups then it is analyzed and the taste signals are sent to brain brain has got, has got a center where the tastes are analyzed and you will come to know what taste it is so for the whole process it takes some time so here for the taste how we have taste buds taste buds to identify the taste in the same way to identify the smell in the nose we have some receptors called as chemoreceptors or olfactory receptors chemoreceptors or olfactory receptors so here the tongue it will identify the taste when the food is in the form of a liquid then what about in the nose the food molecules must be in the form of a gas so when you are eating the food the flavor some molecules in the gaseous form they enter your nose and so this air mixed with the food molecules if it is absorbed or received by the chemoreceptors they will analyze and send the signals to the brain to analysis what food it is so we have different centers for sensing smell and taste in our brain they are different so that is the way how you will come to know the smell of an object so of course you fail to smell the things when you get cold so here taste and smell so these two the, these two things they will help to identify the exact or actual flavor of the food so they will uh, make you motivated not only the hormone the smell say for example you are seriously reading you got the flavors of some food some delicious food some biryani is made in the kitchen if you get the smell then immediately your mouth waters and sometimes if you imagine if i am talking about tamarind or 
a mango, raw mango, kacha mango, then you will get the mango in your mind, immediately your mouth starts watering. So, in that way, our body is initiated. It gives motivation to take the food. So, if you see a bright colored apple, you will be motivated to eat that. Here, your eyes are bringing the motivation, sometimes the smell, sometimes the idea. If somebody talking, you have seen some picture, you have seen it in a movie, then you will be motivated. You see that how various sense organs are linked up with the process of your eating food and selection of food and digestion of food.